wanted to do a video on five encouraging scriptures to get you through a hard season or just a really hard day or just really hard moments of your life. So I'm currently in a very hard season of my life and I think eventually I am going to share more about it but right now I feel like it's really premature so I've just been encouraging myself I've had others encourage me and honestly not gonna lie through just being encouraged I've been able to persevere I've been able to kind of get back up out of my slump when I have stumbled and when I do feel like I'm down so I really feel like encouragement is such an important aspect of being um, a part of the body of believers I would hate to have this platform to realize that there are so many other believers out there, part of my subscriber fam, or just someone who just stumbled upon this video that is just so discouraged and that just needs um, just this fresh wave of encouragement, this fresh wave of hope. So I'm really praying that um, these scriptures do encourage you. I understand 100% what it feels like to feel completely discouraged because like I said, I am currently in the middle of a hard season and these verses have really, really kept me going and sometimes, not gonna lie, I'm really numb to encouragement because I've gotten to a place where I'm just like, my heart is hardened, I just feel so distant from God. But I believe that as you continue to press into who God is and press into his word, that there is healing power there. So I wanted to read a few things on encouragement specifically just to help you understand how powerful it is and to help you understand the purpose and the reason behind this video of encouraging you. Hebrews 3.13 says, but encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Wow. So, sin is deceitful. And if we're not encouraged by the word of God or just encouraged um, well, we're going to believe the lies of the enemy. We're going to believe the lie of the sin. First Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. So basically my point is that encouragement is emphasized all throughout the Bible, and it is so important that as believers, we are seeking to encourage one another and to let that encouragement be genuine. We should be encouraging and speaking life and speaking wisdom and speaking hope um, into those who may feel discouraged or may feel low. So let's get into these five scriptures, and I really hope that these verses encourage you, that they renew you, that they refresh you, and that you feel built up as you watch this video and listen to these verses. I pray they resonate with you. I pray the Holy Spirit gives you a fresh revelation of what they mean for you in your life. And I am just expectant to see how God moves through his word, through these scriptures in your lives. So let's get into the first scripture. So the first encouraging scripture comes from the book of Psalms. And if you know anything about Psalms, a third of it is filled with lamentations. A third of it is filled with just grieving and expressing all the emotions and the hard emotions that we feel uh, based off of what is occurring in our lives. A lot of theologians say that David was the main author, but some theologians say that it was a mix of different um, people who pitched into the psalm. So the verse that I want to read from is Psalms 46, 1 through 5. And it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives away, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when the morning dawns. So specifically in context with this psalm, God is talking about how he has pledged himself to Zion as a place where he will um, live and dwell. And I truly believe that God has pledged himself to us as believers where he will live and dwell. So yes, this does apply to us as believers. It applies to us trusting and believing in God that he will not allow us to be moved. Um, that no matter what chaos is coming around us, no matter what calamity or no matter what kind of destruction or pain or bitterness or injustice in how the day-to-day -day, um, in and outs of life are waging war against us, no matter what's happening, that he's in the midst of it and that we will not be moved um, in him. And then I love the part where it says, God will help her when morning dawns. So I love, I love that because it's almost like in link with that scripture that says, his mercies are new every morning. God is a God of moving. God is a God of wanting to be present in the midst 
of your storm. Um, so I really love that one. So the next verse that I want to read is Psalms 139 verse 1 through 18 and I'm going to be reading this in the Passion Translation. Lord, you know everything there is to know about me. You perceive every movement of my heart and soul and you understand my every thought before it even enters my mind. You are so intimately aware of me, Lord. You read my heart like an open book and you know all the words I'm about to speak before I even start a sentence. You know every step I will take before my journey even begins. You've gone into my future to prepare the way and in kindness you follow behind me to spare me from the harm of my past. With your hand of love upon my life, you impart a blessing to me. This is just too wonderful, deep, and incomprehensible. Your understanding of me brings me wonder and strength. Where could I go from your spirit? Where could I run and hide from your face? If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the realm of the dead, you are there too. If I fly with wings into the shining dawn, you are there. If I fly into the radiant sunset, you are there waiting. Wherever I go, your hand will guide me. Your strength will empower me. It's impossible to disappear from you or to ask the darkness to hide me. For your presence is everywhere, bringing light into my night. There's no such thing as darkness with you. The night to you is as bright as day. There's no difference between the two. You form my innermost being, shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside and wove them all together in my mother's womb. I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think about it. How thoroughly you know me, Lord. You even formed every bone in my body when you created me in the sacred place, carefully, skillfully shaping me from nothing to something. You saw who you created me to be before I became me. Before I'd ever seen the light of day, the number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. Every single moment you were thinking of me. How precious and wonderful to consider that you cherish me constantly in your every thought. Oh God, your desires toward me are more than the grains of sand on every shore. When I wake each morning, you are still with me. Wow, so these verses are packed with God's unfailing mercies and his riches and his love for us. If you ever have a moment where you feel like God doesn't care, God doesn't love me, just flip open Psalms 139 and you shall see that he indeed is so in love with you, so for pursuing you, even if you run to the dark, the dark isn't dark enough for him. So even in the midst of this dark storm, this dark place you're in, you can trust and believe that God is there with you because he's not scared of your darkness. He's not scared of the darkness that you're facing. He's not scared of the place that you feel you're in that's so icky and so uncomfortable. He's there with you. He wants to dwell in that space with you and he wants to bring you out of that because Sin doesn't scare God. Sin doesn't conquer God. Sin isn't pow more powerful than God. Darkness doesn't overpower light. Light always wins in the end. It's like even the tiniest of matches or a candle can illuminate a room. So in the same way, God is not afraid of your darkness. God is not afraid of what you're facing. And the scripture just shows you that he is so involved in your life. He's so involved in your day to day. He is so involved in the details of your life. God is not a careless God. God is not a God who just, you know, slacks off at what he does as a good father and a loving creator. Um, he is a God that truly wants uh, relationship with us so this scripture super encouraging it's super sobering too to realize like God like you literally know my heart like it's an open book to you and you still love me and I know for a lot of us that can be so convicting especially me like God you know my heart and you still love me like you know what I'm gonna say today tomorrow next week and you still love me even if these things aren't glorifying to you or these things are hurtful to others like you still love me like you still love me and it's just like man it encourages me to want to do better as a child of God it encourages me to want to 
um, please God and to love him more because he loves me and he's seen all the sin that I've committed in the past and he's seen all the sin that I'm going to commit in the future um, but he's still like that's my daughter she is so precious um, I love her and I still want to dwell um, in her presence I still want to be near to her nothing she can do whether she soars on eagles wings or she goes and hides in the valleys or she clothes herself with darkness I will still be there because I'm like obsessed with her and not like lifetime movie obsessed with her like I am in awe of my creation um, and that's what God sees you as so the next scripture I'm going to read is Psalms 23 1 through 6 and we all know this um, scripture pretty well um, but I'm gonna read it in the passion translation so it might sound a little different but I just like the passion translation because it really like enriches the words like it brings them alive to me um, it just makes them so much more like wow okay so the Good Shepherd Psalms 23 verses 1 through 6 the Lord is my best friend and my shepherd I always have more than enough he offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me pathways to God's pleasure and leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, Fear will never conquer me, for you already have. Amen. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I'll never be lonely, for you are near. You become my delicious feast, even when my enemies dare to fight. You anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my heart overflows. So why would I fear the future? For your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to be forever with you. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So these verses are, like the others, packed with so many just um, encouraging words of who God is and how he operates like I really love the part where it says Lord even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness fear will never conquer me for you already have and I love the beginning part because I believe as Christians we feel like you know uh, we're exempt from trials we're exempt from pain we're exempt from hard seasons we're exempt from hardship basically and that's just not true like I love where it says you know your path Lord led me into this darkness this valley um, but even still you've conquered it and you and know you're with me so I believe that as Christians we have this sweet opportunity to yes face the hardship face this darkness, face the valley that we're in, but also rely and draw from the strength that God provides to continuously speak the promises of God and the truth of God over us. Like, yes, I am facing this hardship. Yes, I am in this valley, but God is with me and God has conquered this. Like God has gone before me. He's laid out a, a, a path for me. He will not allow my foot to be moved. He loves me and I am secure in him. And honestly, speak that over yourself until you believe it because the word of God is truly healing balm. And we really have to grasp a hold of it um, for it to become our reality and for it to become um, our day-to-day -day, um, way in which we're walking out life. The Word of God almost has to become the script for how we approach our struggles, for how we approach the darkness, for how we attack the darkness, and for how we even perceive the darkness. So um, these last two verses are going to talk more in depth about endurance and basically what and why these struggles are for. We're going to read from the book of James 1, 2 to 4, and I'm sure many of you guys have heard this, but it says, count it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect 
that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. I really, really love this scripture because it talks about how we should count everything as joy um, because when we shift our perspective, when we shift how we perceive our trials, we'll realize that these trials are actually working in our favor because they're building our faith. They're giving us an opportunity to build our faith. If our lives were perfect and nothing ever went wrong or we never struggled or had hardship, we'd have no reason to build our faith. We'd have no purpose of praying or surrendering to God or being obedient or listening for God. So a really cool fact is that the word trials in Greek is dokimian, which means a positive test intended to bring about genuine faith. And I was like, mind blown. Like God is not allowing these tests into your life or these trials into your life to destroy you. He is allowing these tests and trials and struggles into your life to refine you. And I think that the minute we switch our perspective from victim to victor, we can truly reign over these issues and submit them to the authority of God. I can personally say that I need my faith to be refined daily, weekly, monthly, whatever. And I need it to be refined into a genuine faith because it's so easy to have faith and for it to just be there when things are going great. But when things get hard, that's when that genuine faith has to be cultivated and has to be formed in us as believers. So my last but not least scripture encouragement, because there are so many in the Bible, comes from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. And this is in the Living Bible Translation. It says, These trials are only to test your faith, to see whether or not it is strong and pure. It is being tested as fire tests gold and purifies it and your faith is far more precious to God than mere gold. So, if your faith remains strong after being tried in the test tube of fiery trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day of his return. Wow. So, I love this scripture because it's basically just comparing our faith to the process of how gold is refined. And I feel as if trials refine us as believers and literally purge out the impurities that we walk around with daily. So it's like we are becoming more and more refined. We are becoming more and more um, just rich as we walk and allow sanctification and just trials to take its place but to endure through faith and to endure by pushing past, changing the perspective, clinging to scripture that keeps our soul alive, refreshed, and joyful. We are gaining freedom. Literally, as these things are purging, we're becoming more like Christ and we're becoming more refined, um, almost to the image of gold. Um, and the scripture even says that we are more precious to God than gold. So how much more will we be refined if we are precious to God in gold. So I really hope that this video encouraged you. So I want to challenge you to pick an encouraging scripture from the ones that maybe I listed or just the ones that you see in the Bible that encourage you or that can encourage you. And I want you to, first thing in the morning, open up that scripture and I want you to speak it, pray it, and believe it over yourself. I want you to encourage one other person with the scripture or even share this video with someone that you feel needs the encouragement. Um, so like I said, encouragement is such a huge piece and such a vital part of the body of Christ. So I wanted to encourage you to encourage others and I also pray that this video encouraged you. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it, comment below, subscribe if you are not a part of the tribe and I will see you guys in my next video.